Hello, WineAbbers. My name is Jesse Meekham. This is podcast number 339 for WineAbb, where we teach you four rules to help you stop living paycheck to paycheck, get out of debt, and save more money. Today, I want to talk briefly about the API, the Application Programming Interface. Almost had to write that down to get it right. Everyone just calls them APIs. And WineApp now has a, what you call, public API. An API is a way, I might butcher this, so if you're technically minded, don't listen to this one, just skip ahead. But uh, an API, if a piece of software has an API, it just basically means here's how you access things in here programmatically. It's an interface by which you can access the program. And for YNAB, we've set up a public API, and a public API means we've made it available to the public. Now, your first thought is, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You've made YNAB, the application, available to the public? You've made my data available to the public? Oh, my word, no. Absolutely not. We would never, ever, 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 ever do that. So. An API, a public API, basically lets a uh, you know, developer, someone technically minded, come along and say, hey, here's my YNAB data inside YNAB the software, and I would like YNAB the software to do something different with it or in addition to it. And they can start to write a little program that interacts with their data. Essentially, a user can grant a, an application that accesses YNAB data, they grant permission. So if you ever wanted to use a, a piece of software that a developer built, and let's say it was a piece of software that um, you have a Philips Hue light bulb, right? And every time, and, it, and it's uh, above your kitchen window. And every time your grocery category goes negative, you want that light bulb to go red. And you want it to go red um, on the hour for five minutes at a time. So a developer comes along and says, I'm going to build a little uh, script, a little program that does this. And here's how I'll run it on this little server or whatever. And then they say, hey, I'll make this available for other people to use. And so you might come along and find that application and say, ooh, I want to use that too. So you would run that application. And then you would grant that application permission for it to access only your data, and you're running the application on your own. So it's very, very, very controlled. The granting of the application is a little bit like giving a password, but it's a password that can be revoked. So if at any time you decided, I don't want that Philips Hue light bulb to be read anymore, I don't want it to work anymore, you can just revoke the access token that you granted that application and it will no longer be able to access your data, and it will be of very little use to you at that point, but that is perhaps exactly what you want. So all sorts of different add-ons and things can be built onto YNAB where you, as an individual user, can decide whether you'd like to use that application or not. And uh, you might find that it enhances your experience, or you might find that you don't like it at all, and it's totally up to you. What's very cool about APIs, and you'll see uh, PayPal has an API, Banks have APIs. They just don't expose them very easily to the public. Um, let's see. eBay has an API. Craigslist might have an API at this point. I'm not sure. Um, Etsy very likely has an API. Amazon has all sorts of APIs. They're very, very, very common. And uh, I'm excited that YNAB has an API because some brilliant developer is going to come along and she's going to have an idea and she'll run with it and she'll make it awesome and available for everyone, and then they will use it and benefit from it. And uh, APIs are awesome because you get this collective of ideas that uh, come about. And there are a lot of times small little things that we can't build as a company because we have to focus on the big things, right? Stability, speed, um, big, big features, things like that. So these little adjustments, little tweaks, little improvements, um, and I put that in air quotes because not everyone would see it necessarily as an improvement, but you get to do what you want to do. So you can build advanced reporting into YNAB. You can um, have Chrome shut down as soon as your books category no longer work, uh, has any money in it for YNAB. You could just block Amazon.com if your books category doesn't have any money in it. You can build a script that would parse uh, your Amazon receipt as it lands in Gmail and then write up a, you know, record a transaction right into YNAB for it. 
the list goes on and on and on. So the world is your oyster, especially if you know how to program. Anyway, hopefully that clears up a little bit of confusion if you're kind of a layman as it relates to the API. I'd encourage you to read our blog posts about it. And uh, yeah, just take a look around. See, uh, see if you don't see someone that suits your fancy. We monitor it for quality. Uh, if there are um, a certain number of users that are connected to a piece of software, we review it. But as always, um, you know, buyer beware, even though you aren't buying anything. Um, make sure that you, you, know, you know exactly what the software is doing and all of that. But it is a great way to enhance YNAB's usability, which hopefully, in the end, enhances your budgeting. Until next time, follow YNAB's four rules and you will win financially. You've never budgeted like this.